So you take a probiotic, and the question is, how does it actually work? Well, for the longest time, we thought that lactobacilli or bifidobacterium or any of these probiotic organisms had to colonize the intestine. Well, when we, mean, when we say colonize, we actually mean attach to the surface and multiply and stay for a long time. In fact, that's not really necessary, and in many cases, actually most cases, it doesn't occur. The second thing that we, we thought was that they had to kill the bad bacteria. And again, that doesn't necessarily need to be the case. And For example, there's an organism called E. coli 0157, which is, causes uh, deadly food poisoning. And if you kill that E. coli with an antibiotic, it actually makes the patient worse because it releases the toxin. So in a situation like that, you really don't want to release the toxin. And in Staphylococcus aureus, what they've sometimes called the superbug, again, it would be preferable if you don't release the toxin. So killing the bad guys doesn't naturally always have to occur. And if you think about it, if I came with a gun in, and there was three people in front of me, then I could suggest that three things could happen. One of the people would not react and I would shoot them. The second person would hide, and in fact many bacteria do that. They, they stop growing or they go into little niches called biofilms where they're protected from the antibiotic. And then the third reaction would be someone else would pull out a gun and shoot me before I had a chance to shoot them. And in a sense, that's what bacteria do. They say, here comes the antibiotic or the antifungal. We're going we're gonna to kill the host before it gets a chance to kill us. And so you get many cases of infectious disease. I mean, there are 300 million cases of infectious disease worldwide every year and over 5 million deaths. And so bacteria have a very efficient way of killing the host. And what we're trying to do in the, with this concept is, is work with the organisms because we're all in this together, essentially. We're all living in the same host and it's better that we, um, we don't have to kill the harmful ones. Now, clearly, there are many situations where we do have to kill the bad bacteria. Um, so I, I'm not saying that we, don't, we have to suddenly stop using antibiotics. That would be ridiculous. But we've overused antibiotics and, and got to the stage now where we're sort of running out of options when you really need them most. So how do the probiotics work? In the case of yeast, yeast come along, they multiply, and they form what we call biofilms. So it's a, a multi-layer of, of the yeast. If we could stop that process from happening, then maybe we can stop yeast vaginitis. And Gerald Kohler, who is a researcher in California, has shown in very elegant studies that the Lactobacillus rhamnosus GR1 strain significantly prevents yeast from forming these biofilms. And so they were encouraged by that as one of the mechanisms of preventing yeast vaginitis. What about bacterial vaginosis? Well, again, you get this biofilm concept. And try to illustrate what this is like. If, if you put your hand on the underside of a boat, you feel this sort of slimy, uh, s strange kind of uh, substance. And really what that is, is algae and other organisms, and they produce this polysaccharide substance because they want to stick to the underside of that boat. Because if that boat's going at 10 knots, then they don't want to be washed aside. And so in the vagina, these bacterial vaginosis organisms multiply rapidly and form these dense layers of bacteria. Now that's a problem because if you come along with an antibiotic, the antibiotic is designed to kill a, what we call a free-floating organism. So it's just a single organism. It was never designed to kill a dense population of a biofilm. And so we're already starting at a point which isn't ideal, and there hasn't been any antibiotics that have been designed to kill biofilms. And so what we thought was, if lactobacilli come along and can penetrate the biofilm and, in a sense, disrupt it, then maybe it would allow the antibiotic to work better. Well, that might be one reason why we got improved killing of uh, bacterial vaginosis organisms when we added metronidazole with lactobacilli rhamnosus GR1 and lactobacillus roitri RC14. However, in an experiment we did with Gardnerella, now Gardnerella is one of the organisms associated with bacterial vaginosis. In fact, it's the original organism that was thought to cause BV. It turns out uh, today I would say it's not the main cause of BV, but it's still associated with it. 
So we did an experiment where there was a biofilm, thousands, mi millions of uh, Gardnerella. We came along with lactobacilli, and the lactobacilli did two things. First of all, they disrupted this biofilm. So that was exciting. Then we did another set of experiments called uh, crosstalk. Now, so what is crosstalk? You've probably heard of hard talk, which is on the BBC, and you've heard of other talk shows. Well, crosstalk is really bacteria talking to each other. So they communicate with each other every single day. Now, you look inside your intestine, you have billions and billions and billions of bacteria, and they're communicating with each other every day. Hard to imagine, but it's true. So we did an experiment where we had a double chamber. So on one side of the chamber, we put the Staphylococcus aureus, which is the superbug, and the other chamber we put lactobacilli or lactobacilli byproducts. And in the middle, these, these organisms were separated by a membrane which doesn't allow the organisms to cross. Okay, so the only thing that crosses between the two bacteria are signals, communication, peptides, that type of thing. Well, lo and behold, we discovered that in the presence of lactobacillus RC14, Staphylococcus aureus, essentially stops producing its toxin. Now, Staphylococcus aureus, remember, was the bacteria that caused toxic shock syndrome. It's an organism that kills many people in hospitals. And so it's become a real problem. And we're excited because this is saying that lactobacilli talks to the Staphylococcus. It's almost like it says, you know what? Don't produce a toxin. We're not going to kill you. And so there's no reason for you to be so offensive in, in uh, trying to kill the host. We still have to show this in humans, but we're very excited 